morning, everybody. Welcome to the Moms Making Money show. I have a very, very special guest today, and I am so, so excited for her to tell us all about her business and all about the amazing things that she does for female entrepreneurs. I have my friend Queen coming to us all the way from across the great big pond over in England. Um, so we actually were able to make this work with our time difference. And she is, I'm going to let her really explain what she does, but she basically helps female entrepreneurs with publicity and getting them out there. I mean, basically, she makes us famous. So <laughs> um, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Queen. And will you just tell us a little bit about um, your background and how you got started and what made you decide to kind of get into this business of public relations? And I guess that's, is it just public relations? Media, you do media as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. And thank you so much, Amy, for having me. It's such a delightful opportunity to be on your show. And yes, that's exactly what I do. I'm a PR and media coach. And also I do publicist work as well. So I help women to, you know, actually do the pitching on their behalf and help them to get these amazing media interviews. And Perfect. I guess the way I really stepped into this business, I started off always being very entrepreneurial from the age of about 14 I used to do freelance hairdressing and a lady loved my mother's hair and she was like, oh my God, who did your hair? Can you, you know, whoever did it, can they do mine? And I was like, like my mum told me, she was like, oh, this lady wants you to do her hair as well. And so I did the lady's hair and I think that was the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. So from that moment <laughs> onwards, <laughs> I had like literally, like I think it was about 50 clients over a span of the year. So people kept coming back to me. And so I learned about customer service and I learned the importance of, you know, like serving customers well and things like that. And then from there, I, I one day, you know, started competing in pageants and I was doing lots of talent shows. And it was because of the very fact that I got invited to move to Cyprus to join a girl band. I felt like there was a big calling in the UK. So I was like, I can't kind of move to a different country and do the singing thing. But it was really that moment that I felt that something was saying, you've got to actively seek opportunities. And that was my mum's, like my mum's friend, who was my mentor. Mm -hmm. But by me actively seeking opportunities, I actually attracted so many amazing opportunities from beauty pageants to TV interviews, all of those good things. And that's actually when I got to a point where I felt like, oh my goodness, I'm becoming famous. I felt like, wow, like my whole life is headed towards this <laughs> path of fame. And I think that's when I realized that I had a call in that, and the voice was saying, you need to give back. It's not just about you. This isn't just about you. Right. It's about giving back. And that's when I set up a pageant and I started to help loads of girls and women. And then I got another call in and it was like, now it's time to, it's time to help women entrepreneurs. It's time to like give them the tools, the strategies, the, the coaching, the mentoring on how they can get the media opportunities that you have got and right. so much more. And so that's how... I stepped into this calling around 2016 is when I finally felt like I was meant to step into the PR and media work. And prior to that, I guess my other career has been TV presenting as well. I've been doing that for like 10 years as well. So that's been something on the side that I've also been doing as well. Just a little thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's oh, good. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. That is so cool. So what... What was kind of the shifting point for you when you were like, okay, I'm going to go all in and I'm going to teach these, like teach other women what I know. And what kind of resistance did you get? Or, or, you know, what kind of came up for you as far as like obstacles that you had to overcome to get to the point where you are now? Great question. Well, I definitely think that like I had that call in, I think it was my coach, my coach, she was back then, I have worked with two different coaches. My first coach, she was the one that was like, queen, you're just like, you've got all this experience in the media you've helped so many girls and women in the pageant world and you've got like so much confidence when it comes to PR and media I think you're meant to be a PR and media coach and I tell you I was like not one more media thing I was just thinking not one more thing about fame and I just felt like it was a bit like vanity and so I just felt like it's time for me to sort of like step away from the whole media thing and just focus more on like public speaking and maybe do something more corporate. And I don't know, I just felt like that something was just telling me, no, you need to really step up and do this. And I think it was when I started to see some of my colleagues and mm -hmm. they were having some great success. And then I really realized that 
I wasn't having the exact same results. So my coach was like, Queen, I think it's because you're not doing this PR thing. I think that's the reason why. Like, you need to step into this role. You need to fill that role. And so that was my first resistance. And I think that when I interviewed about 25 women and found out that, like, none of them had a media page and they didn't really do media interviews and some of them were at the six-figure level. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what's holding me back? And I think that's when I realized I need to step in and fill that mm. gap. Um, but I also definitely had a lot of um, resistance in re in the sense of just knowing that people wanted me to do things that were more professional, like work nine to five. And I did have to leave my nine to five job. And even when I did go back at one point, I still had to leave again. So it was this feeling of like, should I go you know, all in or should I kind of do something on this side? It's just this constant struggle. But eventually I I mean I've always known I was an entrepreneur from a very young age and so I had to take the plunge and I just really had to push through all of that and do what I believe I'm called to do perfect I love that I love and I love that you come to it with so much confidence too thank you <laughs> <laughs> well it's so uncommon I, I mean it's definitely a good thing but I feel like it's so uncommon to you know come out of the gate you know like just go get going from the beginning with confidence mm. you know what I mean and exactly. so and obviously confidence is what attracts our clients to us it's what helps us close our sales it's what helps yeah. us grow our businesses but I feel like so many women who I speak to they're afraid they're afraid yeah, of you know what's this person over here going to think? What are my coworkers going to think? What if my boss finds out? What's my, you know, my mother-in-law, sister-in-law, mother, sister, friend, what, what are they going to think, you know? And I think they allow that to hold them back in some ways. 100%. I do believe that too, definitely. Yeah. So I'm glad, I'm so glad that you just kind of hit the ground running from a very confident, uh, you know, a very confident place. I think that that is such a huge deal. So um, tell us a little bit about exactly what you do. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's such a great question. I mean, I definitely think that I, and by the way, I know exactly what women feel like because I have felt that even when you're in that position where you're working full time, you still have that feeling right. every single day. So I totally get what you're saying. Um, but yeah, what I tend to do with women entrepreneurs is I work with women in different ways. So one of the ways I work with women is just, in a way, kind of like helping the ones that are up and coming to get their first few media interviews. And so I just like, you know, obviously do lots of trainings online. I basically make videos and do live streams and I just give all that free content, free advice. But then I do also work with one-on-one -on -one clients. And I've also done a couple of group programs as well, where right. I help women to get their first few media interviews or women that already are like real high-end women, women that are really successful, like they've got like huge following, they are like six-figure level or beyond and they want to basically take everything they're doing to the next level. So they're already getting media interviews, but I'm just helping them to have consistent media interviews. So in a way, I like to call it 52 weeks in the media. So it's not that you're going to have definitely 52 weeks in the media, but it's this idea of planning for it and preparing right. for it and acting as if like every week something's going to come up. So I take over women's PR. I do the whole thing for them. Like, for example, one of my clients is a fitness coach, sort of like a... Um, a body confidence and a self-love coach. And so how I work with her is I basically, you know, I've assessed her brand. I, I look for all the podcasts and the TV shows and all of those amazing shows that I think are a great fit for her brand and magazines and everything. And then what we do is we look at everything and I obviously make sure she's okay with what I've got on the spreadsheet. So I put everything into a spreadsheet and I begin the pitching job. So I start to pitch to the media on her behalf. I start to reach out to the shows and, all these um, TV hosts and radio hosts. And, and it is a lot of work because obviously you have to warm up to them first through social media. So I have to like build relationships with them. I can't just go in and say, my client wants this. Like I just need to build that relationship. And it's a lot of etiquette. A lot of patience is needed. needed. You need to have thick skin because you're going to get rejected over and over. But the good news is I can receive the rejection like for my clients, so they don't have to directly receive the rejection. I hear what the media is saying. They might say, oh, you know, we need this, or we, we don't really like this, or we want this, or and I will receive that for my client, and then I will, you know, give the information to my client, but in a way that will encourage them to keep believing that the next media interview is coming up. So I do 
do that. And so some of my clients work with me in that way. And that is one of the most amazing ways to work with me. But then um, I also do the group group programs as well. And I do like little mini things for the women that are up and coming, like intensives. So mm -hmm. I'll do like a 10 day intensive or five day intensive, which is like so affordable. It's just something really low end, but it's just to give that buzz and energy and um, help them to get opportunities without me having to do the work for them. No, that's great. That's so great. And I know that you and I have talked in the past and um, without giving away all your secrets, but you gave me like a list of like, well, if you want to start public speaking at all, check out this list of stuff. It's right in your area and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know about this stuff. Like, how did she know this? So it is, it is, it is so, it's so useful to have somebody who that is like literally your zone of genius and you know all of the places just even right off the top of your head, like, oh, contact this person, this, you know, like go through all these steps, like check out this over here or this venue or that venue or, you know, this particular marketing group or whatever, right? And yeah. they're all things that I was like, what? I would have never even thought of this for that, you know? And, and I think that really is just a true testament of, you know, somebody like me, I don't know those things. Like I would have spent <laughs> probably an entire six months of doing all these different researching things before I ever got to some of those, the places that you would send me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I totally know what you mean. It's like, it's so funny because it's true. It's like, oh, you live in, you know, someone's like, I live in Arizona. I live in, um, you know, they can live in Canada, Canada. They could live in even in India. And I would be like, okay, okay. These are the Indian shows that are like, okay, let me just follow these. And so I, I would quickly be able to, within literally minutes, find all the shows, events and, things really quickly just because to be honest with you I must admit the pageant world gave me the best experience I mean there's nothing like having to get yourself like you have to find all these media opportunities to try and win Miss Publicity and so that was one of the things that really helped me as well just the pageant experience I've had two pageant girls on the show this month <laughs> oh, oh that's so so cool uh, I love beauty queens I do I think they're amazing I, I I don't I never really like thought of like ever sharing this and my girlfriend Shannon who had done the show she was like a rodeo queen and she, so I, I just like casually mentioned actually my sister also was on like watching and she like called me out on it um that I'd done pageants like in my teenage years and she's like wait what like we grew up in the same town and I didn't even know you did pageantry wow. like I'm like oh yeah, a couple. I think I remember you mentioning that. Like, was that, oh, like, I remember, I think, because you were saying you've done speaking and then, yeah, oh, my goodness, you should, like, <laughs> definitely let the world know because it is so amazing and it gives such good skills and qualities. You honestly. know, it really does. Um, I feel like, I do feel like it helps my public speaking skills. Like, I, I'm not nervous being on camera with you right now. Mm. You know, um, not to say that I've never been nervous when I got on camera, but I have, you know, I do get up and speak. I've spoken for, you know, charity events and different things. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I, it just kind of takes the edge off, especially when you're not trying to win anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I uh, mean, if I didn't do pageants, trust me, I'd probably be sitting like this and from, like, <laughs> not that you would really do that, but you pageants teach you to, you know, smile consistently, you know, have good body language and and, he, and the thing is, it's about knowing how to switch it on as well. So yeah. it's not always that you need to use it in every moment, but you know, like if you're on stage, you'll be thinking about like making sure you're looking at all the audience, you're thinking about look. So there's just so many little secrets that you learn there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I remember the first time I ever heard the word poise was, yeah, in, yeah. was in pageant like preparation, like you have to be poised. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, cause I was younger and I'm like, what does that mean? And you know, it was like, okay, you know, you have to, that's the way you carry yourself and you know, exactly. kind of in a nutshell, I guess. So yeah, yeah that's super, um, super coincidental that I've got my beauty Queens and my rodeo queen on here at the same, you know, in the same, like she was two weeks ago. So within a couple of weeks of each other. Wow. <laughs> pageant month <laughs> it is pageant month <laughs> and yeah. actually I think it is pageant month wasn't the Miss America pageant like this month that not so long ago exactly yes <laughs> not so long ago <laughs> so it's and Miss England in the UK we've got this pageant called Miss England it mm -hmm. was just not so long ago as well so <laughs> hey <laughs> couldn't have timed it better <laughs> even exactly. if I tried <laughs> no <laughs> you did well <laughs> awesome awesome what would you say, I mean, obviously, other than like 
just reaching out to you directly um, to take advantage of some of the free training that you offer, as well as upgrading to some of your paid services, what would you tell somebody who is starting out? Maybe they want to start being featured. Maybe they want a guest mm -hmm. blog. Maybe they want to start getting interviewed on other people's podcasts, that type of stuff. What's the yeah. biggest tip or, you know, couple of tips that you think is the most like the most important thing for them to consider with uh, just getting started um yeah I think that what I would say is in a way start with I honestly think that the foundational piece one of the most important ones is just get yourself like one book on PR at least so maybe even a book on PR and a media book and it doesn't even have to literally be like a book called you know for example, there's a really good one that I recommend called the PR Masterclass by Alex Singleton. But it doesn't have to be one that says PR on it. It could even be like a media studies book. It could be a book on journalism. It could be a book on digital media. Just anything around a derivative, even if it's film studies. Because uh, I, you know, I had all the books. I had all these different books. Because I, when I studied mass communications, we had to have books on film studies. You needed to learn about the Nollywood industry, the Hollywood world, Amer American cinema, French cinema, you name it, and screenwriting. And I thought that some of it was like irrelevant, but it was all relevant. It all, just as long as you understand the industry, that's one of the best bases. Because when you go on TV or if you're on stage and like you mentioned, there are some there are some like me media jargon, and you want to know what those words are. You don't want to be like so, like what did what did he just say? Like if he says something, you know, like what did the director say? What did the producer say? I don't get it. I don't get what that means. And so then it can just throw you off. Like if they say something like post production or pre production or whatever, um, you might be like, what? <laughs> right? Can you send me can you send me five high re high resolution photos? And you're like high resolution photos what do you what do you mean and I've had a lot of like my clients or women um say things like that like what, are, what do they mean by this and so just familiarizing yourself with some keywords media jargon even if you were to buy a media dictionary wouldn't be a bad idea and then I definitely think practicing your media interview like technique working on the technique even if it seems silly sort of like sitting down with a friend or family member and just practicing media interviews because that alone is going to attract, it's going to help you to draw in the interviews. The interviews will come when you're ready. So if you start to prepare and act as if you're going for an interview and sit down and pretend, you will, just like Christina Aguilera in the mirror when she was pretending to win her first award, it became true when she won the Grammy Award and so on and so forth. And then another thing I definitely recommend is I most certainly think that one should feel very confident and free to gather some media sources together. So like, okay, I want to be in Cosmopolitan. I want to be on the Today Show. Whatever it is, big, like small, medium and big, and ha like just put together a list and then just follow them on social media and then start pitching to them. Like reach out to them by email, be bold. Because once you get your first one or two interviews or your next, your next um, batch of interviews, you're just going to be like, I'm on fire, I'm unstoppable. Like you're going to be like, I can do this. And it's going to keep been a ripple effect and what you'll find as well is you could do one interview and be recommended for another one or somebody yeah. will reach out and say oh you're amazing can you come on my show too and so it really does it's a very powerful thing and if you just put yourself out there your opportunities will definitely unfold yeah it's so funny because this month I think I've been featured for three or four times and I, it's been such a busy month um of just have because people had reached out to me in the past months and it all like one was last week, one with like, I did an interview yesterday and then another one was just like a virtual thing. So I was like, holy moly, like this is a, it's, a lot. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, it's Thank so you. amazing how it just all, it's like a ripple effect, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. And um, and the funny thing is, is I, it wasn't even like, you know, it wasn't like I was on TV or anything, um, mm -hmm. but it's just crazy. And it's all, it's all relative to what you're saying. Like, oh, I should start thinking about, you know, maybe like doing, you know, getting featured because I you know I feature a lot of women but I'm like maybe I should start thinking about getting featured and then people like started reaching out to me and I was like and all I did was just kind of put it into the universe I didn't like, I didn't apply for anything because I know that a lot of people have like media pages and you can you know go on there and apply to be featured on their blog or on their podcast or, mm. or whatever um definitely Speaking of, I need to get that up for my podcast. Yeah, definitely. That's one of the tips I give as well. Normally I say that when you like start doing your first few interviews, or even if you 
haven't got any interviews whatsoever, pretend as if like, oh my goodness, so many are coming, so therefore let me just get the media page ready. And you can just write something like, check back for more media interviews coming soon, and you can give your email and say, you know, if you're interested in booking me, it's a bit like, I remember when I put like all these prices of my coaching packages years ago, before I even ever had my first coaching client. And I remember one of my um, managers kind of seen my website, stumbled on it on Google, and she was like, wow, you charge a lot, don't you? And I was just thinking, I've never had a client. This is just like me, you know, believing it's coming. So I've got all these prices there. But then one day I did get the phone call, like someone reached out and they were like, hi, I saw your website and I'd love to book you. My daughter's got this pageant coming up. Can I book you? And I was like, oh my God, my first client is, you know, so it really right. did happen, but it was because I put it there by faith. And so I definitely think having that media page is great. But the good news as well is because you've got so many interviews under your belt, as in interviewing people, that actually counts in a way as a way of attracting media coverage to you. Hmm. So you might find that you've just come to you based on the fact that you've been giving so much of your, like in a way you're showing yourself on camera so much that they're going to be attracted to you naturally anyway. Right, right. <laughs> well, awesome, awesome. Um, I want you guys to all, what is your, I'm going to type in your email address and pop it up on the screen, or not your email address, your website. Um, so everybody yes. can go over and check that out. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's um, www.queenchoma, so C-H-I-O-M-A, media.com. So that's queenchomamedia.com. <laughs> popping it up on the screen so that everybody can see it. Um, if you're catching the podcast, I will put it in the, in the notes Thank and you so um, you'll be able to just click over there and go visit her and see what she has to offer you. Because basically here's the thing. If you're, if you're trying to grow yourself, you're trying to get that exposure, you're trying to get out there and any sort of like speaking engagements or public speaking and getting your message out there on a larger scale, you basically need somebody like queen. Like, <laughs> I mean, in all reality, because like I said, just, you know, in a five minute conversation that I had with her, she gave me so, so many pointers that I would have never, ever, ever thought of. And I've been accused of being the best networked person <laughs> in um, a couple of times of like, you know, everybody, you know, somebody who does everything. Well, let me just tell you. I know Queen and I know what she's capable of. I know what she does. So she's my go-to for all things PR. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, don't call me because I don't know what to tell anybody <laughs> in that field. So um, no, for real, there's so, so many things and people are so intimidated by the idea of pitching themselves to be featured, mm. even though they have such an amazing, powerful message that really should be shared on a bigger scale, on a bigger level. And, and so because of that fear or that unknowing of what to do and how to do it, it just doesn't get done. And their message just doesn't get shared on the level that it deserves to be shared. Exactly. So, so true. I do have this freebie, which is called 10 Ways to Manifest Media Interviews. And I dropped it, I threw in a couple of bonuses. And one of them is like some affirmations, because sometimes it's the mindset too. And then I threw in um, the eight common mistakes that women entrepreneurs make that stops them from attracting media interviews. So it's like a kind of webinar training. And so those three things together, like I've had a lot of women say, Queen, like this is just like changed everything for me so I definitely think that if even if they listen to like the audio alone I do believe it's going to really open you up and you're going to be like I can do this <laughs> so yeah <laughs> that is so huge what an amazing gift thank you I'm going to be getting it too so <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> most certainly most certainly <laughs> well awesome thank you so so much I know it's getting late there um but thank you so oh, thank so much you. for for agreeing to be on the show. We'll definitely have to um, work on a future collaboration and getting um, getting what you do out there because I feel like it's so, so important. I feel like I know so many people who are like, I want to be famous, not like this or like movie star red carpet famous, mm. but I want to be known in my industry. Mm. I want to be the this, that, or whatever. And I feel like this is like a really good no brainer first step to get going and get start getting that social proof and that credibility and of course sharing your message. Yeah. And the thing is like, you don't have to be at any level. You can start like, I mean, 
honestly, you know, they say be beginner's luck. Like I honestly had no idea. If I had known that, like, when you go online and you see people with 100K followers, I probably would have been like, I'm not ready for any media. No, but, like, I honestly had literally the beginner's luck thing. And not just that, but I also had the confidence to be like, who cares? I don't care if I've got just 29 Twitter followers or 100, whatever, who cares? Like, I can speak on stage. I can speak on TV. The media need me. The media want me. People need me out there. And I just went for it. So I think if women just... Like, who cares if you have 100 followers or 500 or 20,000? It doesn't matter. You can make an impact and you can be a star in your city or your country or in the world because we all have what it takes. So, yeah, definitely go for it. Agreed. <laughs> definitely agree. Well, awesome. Awesome. Um, if you guys end up catching this on Facebook on the replay, be sure to pop in your questions and just let us know that you're catching it on the replay. Um, since we are completely totally international here let us know where you're viewing from and if you're catching it on the podcast feel free to leave a review and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes of awesome interviews such as queen because i'm sure she'll be back um but yes thank you so so much i am so so honored to have you on here sharing sharing this almost it's like i feel like it's like a hidden treasure <laughs> thank, oh thank you so much it's been a pleasure to be on your show and Thank you to all the women listening and men, anyone watching right now or listening. Thank you so much. And I hope that this has been valuable to you. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks again. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.